being kidnapped by a child killer and locked in a soundproof basement, a 13-year-old boy begins to receive calls on a disconnected black phone from the killer's previous victims who are trying to help him escape. Brother and sister Finney and Gwen, along with their father, live in a dangerous area. The main danger was a serial kidnapper in the city of Denver. On the way to school, Finney noticed another piece of paper with a photo of the missing boy. The sister believed that everyone who falls into the hands of the kidnapper will not return alive. Loud shouts distracted them from their conversation. A scandal arose between two students of the school and a fight began. The local bully was attacked by the so-called king of the school and was defeated. Finney couldn't bear to watch the fight and left with his sister. Gwen thought the bully deserved it because he had bullied her brother more than once, but Finney did not agree. There was a legend in their small town, if a person calls the name of the kidnapper, then he will also be kidnapped. Finney, though he tried not to show it, believed in it, and that's why when his sister called the name of the grabber, he was scared. After the lesson was over, Finney quickly packed up his things and ran out of the office. He ran to the toilet because he knew that a trio of guys who liked to make fun of him would soon come for him, but his classmate Robin came to his aid, the one who was the king of the school. Robin told the guys that if they got to Finney one more time, they would deal with him. Finney and Robin agreed to meet after school at Robin's house to help him with math. Meanwhile, Gwen was called to the director. There was a detective in his office. He asked Gwen to give some information about the missing boy Bruce. Recently, Gwen had a prophetic dream where she saw the abduction of a boy. During the retelling of the dream, Gwen revealed a small detail. She dreamed that the kidnapper was in a black van with black balloons. The detectives told Gwen that only the police knew about the balloons and she could not know about it. Returning home from school, Gwen informed her brother that she would stay at home with Susie and Finney should look after their drinking father. Finney came home, turned on the movie, and fell asleep. He woke up to the loud screams of his sister. Their father mercilessly beat his daughter because detectives came to work for him. He told Gwen that she doesn't know how to see dreams that predict the future and that she never will. After some time, Robert was kidnapped. A huge team of police officers went in search of the boy. In the evening, Finney asked his sister to try again to have a dream that would show the future and help find his friend. Gwen asked God for help and went to bed. It's another Friday. Since Finney now has no defender named Robert, he was attacked by those three boys in the morning before school. Finney's younger sister stood up for him, but they all lost. Exactly after school, Gwen went to Susie's, and Finney went to keep an eye on his father again. On the way home, he noticed a man getting out of a black van. The man accidentally scattered his purchases all over the ground. Finney could not pass by and helped him. As soon as Finney approached the car, the man pushed him inside the van. Finney woke up in a small soundproof basement. The grabber said he wouldn't hurt the boy. The grabber got a call and came out of the basement. Meanwhile, Finney was looking around the room he was in. His gaze fell on the phone on the wall. As soon as the boy wanted to call, he noticed that the wires were broken. He lay down on the bed and waited. Gwen was already at Susie's when suddenly there was a call from Dad. He told her that Finney was missing. Finney, meanwhile, was already desperate and had no hope for anything, but at that moment the phone rang. Finney picked up the phone, but the grabber came into the room and ordered him to put it back. The grabber said he had a little problem and needed to leave. Finney tried to call for help but eventually realized that the room really wasn't making any sounds. He saw the window but realized that if it was possible to get out through it, Robert would have been able to escape. The phone call was repeated again and no one answered. At night, Finney wakes up from the gaze of the grabber. Finney asked for food, but the kidnapper said he couldn't do it now. Finney asked the grabber why he came then, and the grabber replied that he just wanted to look at the boy, which confused Finney even more. After a while, the phone rang again, but this time someone answered it. Finney was very scared and hung up, but the phone rang again. It was Bruce. Bruce talked to him, but didn't remember his name or what he did when he was alive. He told Finney about the tiles on the floor that he could take off to dig a tunnel and escape. 
That night, Gwen had a dream about Finney's abduction. Finney found the very slab and began to dig the ground. He flushed the excess earth into the toilet and covered the dug hole with a carpet. Finney sat down on the floor when suddenly the door opened and the grabber appeared in it. He brought the boy breakfast. The grabber went out and left the door unlocked. Finney was about to leave, but another boy named Billy called on the phone. He explained that this is a game that the grabber is playing and that he is hiding upstairs to attack Finney if he leaves the basement. Finney obeyed and did not go up. Billy suggested using the cord he found when he was in this room to get out through the basement window. Gwen had another dream about Billy trying to get in. Finney broke the bars on the window but couldn't get out through the window now. Gwen told her father about all her dreams. Dad thought that Gwen just had a well-developed imagination and wanted to be like her mother, who also had such dreams. Gwen was able to convince her father to believe her dreams and go in search of Finney. Detectives walked around the whole area to interview all the residents and make sure that no one saw the ruling boys. They knocked on another door, and it was opened by a man named Max. Max was very interested in this case and tried to help the detectives. It turns out that Finney is being held in Max's basement, which he does not know about, and the grabber is Max's brother. After another creepy encounter with the grabber, Finney talked on the phone with another victim, Griffin. Griffin showed Finney the combination to the lock and informed him that the grabber had fallen asleep upstairs. Finney sneaked upstairs and opened the door with the combination, but the grabber's dog barked, warning him about Finney's escape. Finney had already run outside. He almost managed to escape, but the grabber woke up and went to catch up with the boy. He managed to catch up with him and knock him to the ground. Because of Finney's screams, a light turned on in one of the houses. The grabber told the boy that if he made even one sound, he would immediately kill him. The lights in the house went out. The grabber hit Finney, and he passed out. Depressed by a failed escape attempt, Finney answered the next call, hearing another victim, a punk named Vance, a bully whom Finney was afraid of. Gwen got another vision, now about the abduction of Vance, and saw him at the grabber's hideout. Vance informed Finney about an adjacent storeroom through which he could escape if he punched a hole in the wall. Then he could exit through the freezer on the other side of the wall. Finney made a hole with the toilet lid and went to the back of the freezer. Alas, the door was closed with a chain. When Finney failed again, the phone rang again with Robin on the other end of the line. He comforted Finney and convinced him to finally stand up and fight for himself. He ordered Finney to pick up the phone, fill it with the earth he dug up to weigh it down, and use it as a weapon. Gwen found a house that was in her vision and immediately reported it to the detectives. Max, the grabber's brother, after another dose of drugs, suspected the children were hidden in his basement. He didn't want to believe it, but decided to check it out. Going down to the basement, he opened the door and saw the boy. Finney started begging Max to call his dad or sister, but Max wouldn't listen to him. He thought that the grabber was at work now and they had nothing to be afraid of. Max wanted to tell Finney how he found him, but the grabber appeared from behind and killed Max. The grabber wanted to deal with the boy in a special way, but Finney had a completely different plan. He quickly ran to the pit that he had been digging for many days and jumped over it. Then he pulled the wire. The grabber tripped over a wire and fell into the pit. In this pit, there was a grate from the window, so the grabber twisted his leg. But Finney wasn't done with that. He took the receiver from the phone that he had previously filled with earth and hit the grabber, and then again and again. When the man hardly moved, Finney began to strangle him with the phone wire. Police and detectives had already searched the house, but there was no sign of the missing boys. Then one policeman noticed the descent into the basement. This was not the room Finney was in. The boys who were killed were buried in this room. Finney, meanwhile, had finished with the grabber and was climbing the stairs to the floor. Finney left the house across the street from the house where the graves were. He found Gwen, and the police rushed to the maniac's house. Brother and sister couldn't believe that everything was finally okay. By this point, their father came and apologized to the children for everything he did wrong to them. 
It turned out that the maniac had two houses, in one, he killed the victims, and in the other, he buried them in an empty house. Finney came to school, and now they treated him completely differently. Here, he was no longer being bullied but, on the contrary, was considered a hero.